What's going on everybody? Ever wondered what's going on in the head of a golf professional when they play through a hole? Not necessarily swing thoughts, but more how to play that hole? Stay tuned, we've got a fun one coming up for you. All right, welcome back everybody. Today we are doing something really fun. We yep. are going to play through a couple of holes, each of us. Mm -hmm. And uh, and talk about what's going on. Yeah, looking at um, looking kind of at that course management type stuff, like how would Ryan or myself approach a hole, some kind of things to think about. Um, now, clearly, it's very easy to look at how to approach a hole in here because yeah, you have a bird's eye view of right. it, and you can say the slider that moves around and gives it you exact yardage that far to that spot. So, um, kind of like the precision that a say a tour pro has with their caddy, right? just as precise so, with that little aerial view. I would say we're gonna try not to use that. Yes. So that you get a better explanation of what's going on. Now, obviously there are some scenarios if we decide to take a different line, mm -hmm. we kind of have to, so that we adjust where we're hitting. Yes. Um, Cause obviously on a golf course, you just move your body here, you move the screen. Mm -hmm. So, but we're gonna try not to use it except for basic yardages that you would have in a yardage book. So when we refer to this, we'll actually refer to it as a yardage book for yes. these next couple of holes. Mm -hmm. just so that you guys kind of have an idea. So. Yeah, being that your yardage book's gonna be an aerial view of it anyway, so. Pretty much, and hopefully to... with the right numbers on it. <laughs> yeah, if fingers, not, fire fingers, your caddy. Fingers crossed. Um, also, uh, the biggest difference too is you're not gonna have a caddy more than likely kind of walking around with you. So, yeah. essentially when Aaron goes, who is gonna go first, I'll kind of talk through with him a little bit and caddy, but lightly, mm -hmm. um, his decisions to make. And then we'll invert, play another hole, because I think the cool thing is is that even though we're similar skill levels as far as abilities, which yeah. seem to be wavering equally at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we approach it a little differently. Yeah, completely, yeah, different approach. And that's, and being said, when you get up into a hole, are you a little bit more, play it safe, a little more aggressive? Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of, I mean, I like to hit driver. <laughs> so aggressive, like, I just like heard to, aggressive. I like, to, I like to hit driver. I mean, I'll, if it's, <clears throat> If it makes sense, if it sure. doesn't make sense, I mean, if I'm trying to hit a sliver, which is something we're gonna talk about, like right. we're gonna try to hit little bitty spots with a driver, like. It, so 50-50? Yeah, I'd call it that. Whereas I'm the guy going, oh, it's wide enough, I got it. Yeah, I hit that. And so it's, I have a tendency to be way more aggressive than most people, so. Um, what course are we playing? Cool, so this is Sabonic up in the Hamptons that I've Fancy. been told that it is the most expensive golf course to join in the United States. Is it really? That's what I did not know that. That's what I was told. And I've, I've been heard there and I did not know that. Don't quote me on numbers. I'm sure somebody can quote me, but I've heard it's maybe close to a million. Oh, um, if you know, throw it in yeah, the comments put, below. Put Let the us number know. down below because I'd love to know, but I have heard that it's the most expensive golf yeah. course in the country to join. You can't necessarily just Google some of that stuff every time because yeah, they they're protective of the information. Yeah. So, yeah. and you're probably not knocking on the door and asking mm -hmm. them, hey, right. what's it cost to join here? Pardon? And in your flip flops and uh. Yeah, because if you're asking <laughs> tank that. Top. Yeah. yeah, it's like Augusta. If you ask to join, yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So we are on the first hole, par four, 316 yards. Yes. Uh, dog leg right. Mm -hmm. Again, we're just going to use the little bottom right as an overview. So uh, right out of the gates, Aaron, as far as your game, talk about what you like to do off the tee. So I kind of hit a little bit of a cut shot. Um, yep. is what I like to hit and what I tend to hit. Um, no wonder you wanted to go first for this hole. <laughs> this skill works out pretty well. Um, 316, it's downhill. Right. A um, little bit of wind blowing left to right, kind of maybe quartering a little bit off your like, left shoulder. Yeah, we look like about 225 to an early bunker. I would guess probably about 260 to the bunkers a little far and left. Mm -hmm. So you have a little bit of an option here. So, so this is where the risk reward comes in real fast. <laughs> so like right right off the bat, if I'm looking at this hole, what I'm gonna do is, is I'm going to aim at that left green side bunker. So you're gonna try just, and cut the corner a little bit. Yes, yeah, so I would just okay. hit it straight at that. If I push it a little bit, I should get caught by those bunkers on the right um, that would stop me from so going out of bounds. So essentially you're gonna take it down the edge, edge of, of the, the tree line. line. So mm -hmm. if you're not looking at the overhead view, if you're looking at the face on. Correct. Not face on, but down the line, down I guess. Line. Mm -hmm. um, you're be... gonna take it and you might have a little bit left of that bunker, but essentially you're gonna hug that right side and try and just bring it around a little yep. bit. Yep, so just to aim, yep. there's basically where I'm Pretty close. So aiming you, right there, yeah, straight so down the edge of the tree line. How confident do you feel in not pushing the ball? Mm -hmm. And again, that's 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 finding you understanding your game when you play the round. Yes. If you know that you have a little pull cut, this is fine. And I have no issues getting a ball up in the air. That's what she said. If you tend to, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you tend to hit a low bullet, 
This would probably be a fairly scary shot being that there is- Or a push draw. A, yeah, there is a giant <laughs> wallow trees right yeah, in Yeah, this of is you. not, and I, I say that, you know, I feel like for the most part, we can work the ball both ways mm -hmm. if asked to, but again, when you're making these decisions, fall into what's most what's comfortable. comfortable and what is a high percentage. Right. So like for me, a push draw doesn't work on this hole. So this is one where I actually might forfeit the driver personally and say, mm -hmm. I'm gonna just hit a three iron out there or a three wood or something and because it's a, I mean, it's a it crazy, short. It's a crazy short hole anyway. So right. when you're talking about- 16 realistically, if I really get a hold of one, there's an off chance I could actually get there. Yeah, I so, could. Uh, you're about 10 yards behind me, so. Yeah, and this thing being downhill, again, right. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but I'm assuming that probably once you get past those bunkers, it probably goes and funnels down to it that It looks hole. like it wants to, and typically things that are on the ocean, which obviously you can see a beach on our overhead here, mm -hmm. um, want to do that. They, everything typically goes towards the water. Okay. Now, the hardest part about all that. Execution. We've got an idea, we've got the game plan. It's all set in stone. Now Aaron just gotta do it. Do easy, it. right? Easy, easy game. Ball doesn't move. <laughs> well, yeah. it is right now, because you it's keep moving, moving it. I'm moving it everywhere. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So we're going a little cutty, just over the edge of those trees. Let's see how she does. Oh, 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 we got it up quick enough. That's a good thing. Yeah, that was a toe cut. So obviously Aaron left the club face a little open, towed it a little bit, but holy, what did you just wow, hit? Wow, that was a hard hop. So I will say one of the cool things is because this hole sets up to what Aaron's game plan was, and we didn't talk a whole lot about the miss, but- I've got a lot of room to miss over there. If, if you, he has rooms to miss. Um, you, you remember what you said earlier. You said, I had the potential to get the ball pretty high, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So even if he did push it, you didn't feel like you were necessarily going to no, hit the trees. I'm scared of those trees, yeah. The question is, and that leaves you with 35 yards. So, um, not a bad little spot to be considering the miss. Considering how bad, yeah, how big of the miss. But it also was. not ideal. So this is uh, most side. people's like nightmare when it comes to golf, <laughs> right here. Yes. So you got 35 yards in. You're 33 inches up to the hole. A little bit of undulation up there, it looks like, and you have to carry it. Looks like most of the way, thanks to the so, bunker right in front of you. Thanks to the technology we have from TrackMan. If I am out playing this golf course, being that I'm at Sabonic and I've, this is probably my only time to play it. I'm not gonna get to play a bunch of rounds out there. Right. Um, but regardless, especially on a new golf course, I've got this shot, like we're saying, 35 yards, which I personally, whenever I look at like a, call it 50 to 20, uh, 50 to like 30 yard shot, yep. I think for uh, an average golfer, it should be very easy, like when you look at it distance wise, but it's probably one of the harder shots mm -hmm. to hit because we're, uh, uh, where, where am I supposed to go in here somewhere? I thought you were having a I spasm for a minute. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> <there, but laughs> I didn't realize, it. I got you. So understanding but, how big the swing needs to be yes, in relationship to the yards. Because it is not a full swing and it's not a chip. It's to put whatever Aaron just did into words. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere between yeah. here and here. And, and I'll tell you, I think the biggest cop out and, and yes, I know this is probably calling people out a little bit, but mm -hmm. to say you're a field player in this situation, so am I. But you still have to understand yardage and length of stroke and yeah, what that I mean, feels like. Yeah, so you have to, to sit there and just go, right. How far are you supposed to take it back? To, to sit here and say, I'm a field player. I don't really think about the yardage. I just see it and I just hit it. I'm like, well, that's called guessing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all oh, completely a field player. But right. now like for me, I work in uh, even, or I, I work in whole numbers and that's some people do that. So I go, 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards, 50 mm -hmm. yards, 60 yards. I understand what those are. So in this 35 yard scenario, I kind of look at the green and figure out what's yeah. going on. Obviously here, looks like you wanna fly it most of the way. You're gonna to wanna to leave it off the left so that's, a little bit. That's what I'm saying. If I was if I was actually playing this shot out there right now, I would walk up to the green sure. and see, not that. I would walk up to the green, not that still. You wanna I hit would the walk green. up to the green and kind of see what it is now that he I'm, is that i'm looking at off the left hand side mm -hmm. and so you can tell go. there we go so up. Now, now we can go up. so you have some it. undulation you have a lot of no not a lot of room right <laughs> no tons of room left yeah you do have a bunker long and then you have from your down yeah you can see you're back up into that slope a little bit so there's that little bowl that develops and you are now directly to our left mm -hmm. um so the question there is you know, in this scenario, would you bump and run that? Would you fly it up? Like, I'm not necessarily a flop shot. And when I say bump and run, I don't actually mean bump and run. I know there's a big bunker in front of them. 
but you can still hit it a little bit lower, just clear the bunker and let it run out on the green. Kind of trickle up. Um, you can hit a more standard chip and just kind of land it, you know, maybe handful of paces on the green, or you flop it up and try to land it as close to the hole as possible and just let it check up a little bit. Yeah, you. so the, um, the flopping it up and getting it to land and not really go anywhere, uh, me personally, I see that as a completely situational shot. Sure. If that flag was, call it 15, 20 feet closer, then absolutely, I'm gonna- Especially you know, in that bowl. Sit here and try to get something to go up and sit back down. Uh, another thing with the average golfer, amateur golfer, I think they try to do that 100% of the time. They do. Too many times. Yep. Like, and they end well, up, and they end up the ball chunking and... it into the bunker or blading it into say. the other bunker. <laughs> Either way, bunker. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> I mean, it's a one out of 10 right. maybe shot for them. Yep, exactly. So, so you watch way too many. I had this problem with when I was coaching high school kids is they, uh, they watch a golf tournament on TV and all they see are the sexy shots. Like, that's true. That's all they see. They see the like crazy fill flop. Yeah, and over somebody's the, head into the hole. Yeah, and they see all these the highlights. They see right. the highlight reels. They don't see the guys that bumping an eight yes, iron. Yes, he and does that or... two times around, and then the rest of the time he's just you know just kind of hitting like a little chippy fifty degree or a yeah with like with like ten yards of run and yeah just trickles up by the hole. It doesn't necessarily go in. It's inside the five foot circle. It's just a standard par, which does yeah. not make. The ESPN or Sports no. Center top ten, unfortunately. And the uh, and the other thing too, a bunch of stuff as you play the the nights or golf courses and your tour stuff, all those things like that, is you have a whole lot more rollout on some of oh, these yeah. greens. Like these things are not <clears> running <throat> a a nine or a ten like your average municipal no. golf course. They're going to be like, at least a twelve. It hits and just keeps going. So whenever they're chipping right. with a fifty eight or a fifty four. You at home right. at a golf course should be using like a nine iron or a pitching wedge. They yep. just probably couldn't do that because it's gone. But with mm -hmm. all that being said, into a bunker. Uh, yeah, kind of a uh, kind of a little whatever. Land it halfway there and just kind of let it release. Is that what you're gonna do? That's what I'm gonna. That's, that's what and it looks like you right took here. it about. I don't know. It looks like about ten feet off to the left. Yeah. Give or take, because obviously it's gonna run. Run. Good God. To that water. It's going to want to run back down. And again, back to execution. A little short. Got away with it. You're gonna funnel down to that little bowl right there. And you got an uphill. Yep. Uphill, probably 15 footer or so. We have putts on. 17 footer. We do not have putts on. We do so we're not gonna really talk about putts. We're just gonna talk about yeah, just um, into the hole. kind of overall. So um, reading a green is kind of the same across a lot of different greens. You know, but it, it it does take into effect, obviously, speeds, those types of things. But mm -hmm. you can take reading a green from Sabonic to Ridgely Country Club to Colonial to Mira Vista to even here to a point. Um, not really here. That's all, a little different. It's all going to be, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's very, very similar. So, um, and then Aaron obviously ended up there with a par. So A little par. Take 18 of them. Nice and standard. Okay. And you left me with the You weirdest... have some bunkers to <laughs> tend to out there. Some. I like how you said some. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three bunkers that I will see on the aerial right now. And that's not counting that green up and left, which is in play for me. Um, okay, so hole number two at Sabonic, par four, four hundred and ten yards, eleven inches down, so really not all that much undulation. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. Uh, you're gonna. So. I mean, right out of the gates, just looking at the overhead, it, this is one of those scenarios where it almost looks like I could blow it further left or right and be safer than going in the middle of my fairway. Going straight down the middle of the fairway. Yeah, absolutely. And so this is where professionals have a tendency to get a little creative. Now, there are such things as in course out of bounds in mm -hmm. that scenario. And I know they try to get you to play the hole as it's designed, but it's a 410 yard par four. If you look at it, so 230. So right about that 300 mark, there's those three little bunkers right mm -hmm. at the turn. And then you have the one off the right. So if I was gonna hit a driver here, I'd probably take it pretty much at the pin, just a little left of that big tree yeah, I'm staring I'll say at. That, that, um, and throw it down. The, bunk, the bunker that's right above one, the word 179. Yes. Be kind of a line right there. That, exactly, so just a little right of it, assuming that tree wasn't in my way up here by the tee box. Mm -hmm. um, the other option I would have would be to pull out, say, a hybrid three iron, yeah, a, two, a, a 240 club, and play it just left of those that big cluster of bunkers in the middle of my slash that other fairway. Mm -hmm. um, and just leave it out there knowing full well I'm gonna have 180-ish 
yards in, which obviously on a par four is not ideal. Um, again, I'm aggressive. Yeah, I mean, you so, should, because I mean, if you hit that shot you're talking about there, yeah, you would have, you're basically 300 to those bunkers. That leaves you 120 in. Right. So, and again, like I said, we're using this kind of like a yardage book. Your yardage book would definitely tell you. Sure. I would that imagine bunker. that at this place it would say i would hope to these bunkers from yeah, this yeah, yeah. t it's this far it's gonna and then you so 298 my cab my carry is right around there so the question becomes is do i want to pull out a three iron and leave it and this is for y'all's visual here in that ballpark probably a three wood or do i want to take a driver and try and get over these things which again 295 i'm a little more aggressive i kind of say swing away yeah. because the chance of having you know, on a course where most people probably would just pull that three wood out and leave it a little short or driver, depending on how far they hit the ball. You know, I feel like that's where my length gives Take me a little advantage. bit of an edge up, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously it depends on if we're playing in a tournament, what's going on around me too. If I'm yeah. way out of it, oh yeah, swing away. Yeah, just rip it. And then back to the execution part. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Big hop. Big... No. They cop somewhere other than that bunker. Stop! Oh. So that's just pure right dumb luck. <laughs> so talking about execution, I got a little, my hands out in front of it a little bit and turned on it just a little bit with a little bit of a shut face, but I got really, really lucky and I rough caught me. Looks like a pretty level shot. Pretty straightforward, straightforward shot here. Right, I'm um, still only about 126 out. You're, um, you know, looking here, <clears throat> whenever you're looking from- I'm up now from back, you know, from the hole backwards to where you're at. I mean, basically your miss is short. Yeah, and obviously in this scenario, you're seeing this, but at the same time, I would walk to the top of that hill. Yep. Uh, I just wanna go up. And I wanna see kind of what's going on up there. So by doing this, it's kind of my version of walking to the top of that hill, looking at it. Um, obviously in this scenario, I don't really wanna be long and right. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, my miss is either short or left. So luckily the pin is also kind of <clears throat> short and left, thank God. Um, I can only imagine how difficult that would be if that thing was tucked back there on the right. Yeah, I mean, I would say that that's probably a pretty pretty fair right. shot would be to aim like front left of that's the green. That's what I was gonna say, that's about where. That's, yeah, that's exactly where I'd be looking at. Cause I would imagine that everything's, again, going kind of towards the ocean, should right. kind of kick over there. We have, we really don't have any wind, so. You know, for me, something like that, that's about where I would aim, knowing full well that if I were to chunk it or thin it, I'm probably okay. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, but obviously being right here. Now, I'm also, because I'm in the rough, I have to automatically take some off this, which unfortunately puts me between clubs. Mm -hmm. and my head, automatically this needs to go 130 yards because of the rough, and then I'm nine feet up, which is another couple of yards. Mm -hmm. So the question is, is now I'm kind of in between clubs. I'm gonna de-loft something and swing a little harder at it. Because again, if I clubbed up, I run that risk of catching it out of the rough a little differently. If I'm, yeah, I catch a flyer or or something, and all of a sudden face. I'm in one of those three bunkers long mm -hmm. and not a real easy shot coming back. So if I'm gonna miss it, I'd much rather miss it short miss and have short. a nice little yep. easy chip up to it. Yep, and you're gonna have less spin coming out of it. So short may hop up, all right. that kind of stuff. That works. Just eat it up. Easy. Just how I drew it up. Easy game. You know, something else we didn't really talk a whole lot about. I'm not going to get to hit another shot again, obviously, because I stiffed it. Um, but something you want to take into consideration when you're playing that we didn't talk about because we didn't have that scenario was um, the lie you're standing in. So like for there, Correct. my feet might have been a little above me. I didn't feel like I pushed that ball. But if you notice, it went a little right of where I was initially aimed, which is left of the green. Yeah. And so it, it wanted to float that way a little bit. So the ball might have been just slightly beneath my stance. Again, mm -hmm. just an inch can adjust that a little bit. And so understanding where you are in relationship to that golf ball can help that decision making process as well. Because in that scenario, I probably might have even aimed it a little further left if I thought that was two or three inches push down. Off right off the face. Exactly. Yeah. Or if I was up the other direction, I would have aimed off to the right, even if it did mean aiming at a bunker, knowing full well it's going to shoot it off to the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see, um, like we don't have one, but if you like a really cool visual is if you take one of those um, those little magnets with the stick on it yeah. and stick it to your club face and you can notice that 
something else that we haven't talked about, but that's that's a, kind of a deal there is that the more loft you have, the more the uh, ball above or below your feet is yes. going to exaggerate where the golf ball goes. And being 125 ish yards out, whatever hit, I was. Yeah, if you're standing there, you know, with a ball four inches above your feet and you have like a 56 in your hand, right? you can have that little thing on there and you can see that the, it will be pointing way left, but then you drop down to a pitch and wedge or a nine iron and Not all of a sudden much. it Doesn't goes a little bit straighter on there. Now, yes, you have to take a lot off of it, but you run less of a risk of like hitting some big swiper over there. Right. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, you know, we've been doing more of these instructional videos and we've talked a whole lot about swing mechanics so far. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that this is probably the stuff that separates professionals from amateurs the most. Yeah, and I think it's also, it gets passed up a whole bunch. Everybody gets so focused on, like you're saying, like, oh, we need to be in this I position, that flat. position, you we gotta be over right. here doing that. But then you get on the golf course and you hit it and you're like, okay, what do I do next? Whoops, what, hap there, what happens? I hit it just the way I wanted to, but there's a bunker there. <laughs> yeah, what happens, what do I do whenever it's sitting in rough? How does that right. affect it? What happens when it's above my feet, below my feet? Which is something that we can go outside and kind of dive into too a little bit. Right, and um, hopefully, throughout these videos. I know we're doing more of the instructional videos, whether it's mm -hmm. this or mechanical, that kind of stuff. Um, we might have another video coming out. I'm not sure if it came out before or after this, um, that we had a little more fun. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> funny one. Um, we've kind of made a conscious effort to not necessarily go away from the challenges, but do less of them. Mm -hmm. Cause we realized for you guys, it's fun for us. <laughs> yeah, we enjoy it. It's a little bit more boring for you guys though. So a um, lot more club reviews. Obviously we're gonna do that as we get our hands on stuff. So they're, they're always kind of a priority. So they're kind of ranked on tier one. Instructional stuff in my opinion has kind of been bumped up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, just because there's not a ton of actual golf professionals that are teaching pros doing a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. There's people out there that are trying to get better. I found a lot of guys that are trying to go from like a 10 handicap to a scratch or a 25 to a 10 or whatever. And they're kind of following their journey, which is cool. Um, but given that our two primary jobs are to teach golf. Yeah, to give, yeah, to give instruction, to get those tips, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Make, so Try we, to help you get better. Exactly. So we've been doing more of that and you can check out our Instagram accounts for even some quick little tips. Mm -hmm. Rumor has it, you guys are on a different platform now too. Yeah, yeah. We've got something on the forbidden TikTok. China app. I'm just <laughs> yeah. kidding, sorry. The China app. Uh, um, tell me BJ's dancing. We're trying to, <laughs> we're, we're in the process of figuring it out, but we're basically what we're doing is we're doing like a hole in one challenge. So like every day um, we're hitting a couple, like three shots to the same hole and just, I don't know, just gonna see how long it takes. I to didn't get asked to do it because they were scared. Yeah. We also, I'm not last, there every day. <laughs> we need it to last more than a day. Yeah. Also, I'm there three-ish days a week, not, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not the other, because I have the other side of my business I have to go attend to. So. Um, yep. Yeah, if you guys have something you want to work on or want to see more of, or if you want us to dive in, we do have access to outdoor facilities as mm -hmm. well. So um, when we get to putting and those types of things, that might be fun to take the track van out there Yeah, and do some outdoor stuff. Cause I know it's a little bit difficult putting in here. Um, you get all the right information. It's just, you don't get to see the ball in relationship yep. to the hole minus the screen. So um, we do have some ideas for some other instructional videos. We're going to keep rolling them out. We do have a, uh, another couple challenges coming out that one of our Somebody commented on they want us to put some uh, like crazy glasses on to where oh, we're now? almost like cross-eyed can't wasn't see. It? Yeah, because I, I don't remember. And this do comment. it closest. Do it closest to the pin with basically oh, like, like drunk goggles. Like drunk goggles on. Hey, so I hope that helps y'all out. And keep checking us out. Post your comments, and we'll get to them. Thank y'all. See you later.